Hello there and thanks so much for joining me for another tutorial. I'm Erin Eno and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint a quick, really loose background for your watercolor florals. Backgrounds can be intimidating, um, but this really is a simple way to do it and just have fun and let loose in the process. If you do like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Grab your paints and let's get started. Today I'm using my Artisto sketchbook. It's 140 pound. Um, it's a cellulose paper, it's not a cotton paper. You've seen me use this um, before in some of my tutorials. I have my Royal Talons Van Gogh paints in my palette, a jar of water and a paper towel. And I have three brushes. I have a size six round in the Curry's 2400 series brush, and I have two Princeton Neptunes, one in a size eight round and one in a size four. And I'm gonna start with my size eight round. Actually, I'm just gonna move these over here. And I wanna make a kind of dusty rose color, and I've used this color before, I quite like it and it is a permanent red light with a little bit of permanent blue violet. I'm just going to play around with this a bit until I get the color that I want. Just a titch of the blue violet, it goes a long way, so I'll be cautious with this. Maybe a little more. And I think that looks about right. But we're going to start off with a really light wash first. And we're just going to do three really loose florals, flowers. Okay, so I'm just dipping up my brush in my water to get some of the pigment off. And I'm just going to do really kind of loose, flowy petals. Okay, not fussing too much with their shape. Just keeping them nice and loose. Like so. Then I'm going to take my smaller number six brush, go in, actually, you know what, I'm going to use yellow ochre. Get a little bit of that there. And I'm just going to grab a little tiny bit of it and just kind of touch some in here and there and then with that same brush I'm going to get some darker pigment of that kind of dusty pink that we mixed up and I'm just going to tap it in the middle okay and you can rinse dry off your brush and flick some of this out if you want just to Get some texture in your flowers. And I'm going to go back in and tap just a little more towards the center and let that bleed out and see where that leaves us. So then we're going to do a couple more of these. So go back to my size eight, get a light wash on my brush, and we'll do one down here again, just nice fluffy petals, maybe a little smaller than the first flower. Okay, again, just keeping it nice and loose. I didn't leave much in the center there. I'm going to take just a little bit of pigment out of the center, just tapping it with my paper towel. Okay, and then again, go in with that smaller brush. Grab a little bit of that yellow, not too much, and just tap some in. And that'll bleed out nicely. Okay, and fade out a little bit. So you just see a little hint of that yellow. Then go back into that pigment again and tap some into the center. 
I'm going to close up that center a bit too. It's a little, a little big, just like that. And again, rinse and dry off your brush. Flick some of this out if you want. Like so. And then maybe we'll do one kind of facing off to the side. So again, get that light, light wash. And I'm just going to do two kind of petals facing this way. And then we'll just do a few more little lines there to be the petals on the other side of the flower. Again, just keeping these really loose. And going back in with that smaller brush to grab a little bit of the yellow just for a hit of it here and there. And again with that deeper pigment I'll tap it into the bottom maybe up the side a little bit. That's a lot of water on my brush, a little bit too much water. And I'm going to tap some on those petals in the back. Draw off my brush again. And just drag some out. Now I'm going to go back, now that this is pretty dry, we're going to go back in with that deeper pigment and just tap some in the middle again. And then with a clean damp brush, I'm going to use this number six brush still. I'm going to dry it off, clean it off, and then dry off most of the water and just flick out. some of this deeper color. And when you do this, you can clean off your brush every now and then because it's picking up pigment every time you go in there and you don't want it too dark. And also make sure you follow the curve of the petal shape, okay? So we just want some light lines in there. Just like that. Okay, we'll do the same thing to this one. Just tapping in that pigment then cleaning off your brush, drying it off, and again, just, just light flicks. I'm not even moving my hand, I'm just flicking this up. And if you find it's getting too pronounced, just rinse your brush off again and just keep dragging it up. Okay, it just gives it a little bit of texture and dimension. I do this quite a bit on my flowers just to give them a little bit of interest. Okay, you can even go back in and do it one more time. We'll f uh, finish up a few things and then if we feel we need to go back, we can do that. I want to have some separation between these petals here, so I'm going to just do a thin line, just like so. Okay, 
So rinse and dry off your brush. And if you feel you have to turn your sheet, by all means do that. I'm not flicking up so much here because it's such a small um, angle on that petal. So I'm just kind of blending it out a bit. Okay, flicking up, following the shape of the petal. Just like that. Okay, so now we've got our three flowers and I think we'll leave it at that. So now the fun begins. We're gonna start playing around with the background. And I'm going to use my um, Princeton Neptune size 4 and I'm going to mix up just a pretty basic green using sap green. I think I'll start with maybe plain sap green first. And I'm just going to draw a stem or paint a stem rather up to this guy right here. And you don't have to worry about it too much because the stem will basically be kind of gone in a few minutes once you see what we're going to get into. Okay, so we've got a stem there. We'll do a stem coming up to this guy as well. Okay, so now I'm going to heavy that up a bit. Actually, I'm going to mute it a bit, I think, with some olive green. And then we're just going to go in and just flick a few kind of blades of grass. Okay, so I'm just flicking up. Let's come all the way up and do some out there. You can do some thicker ones. We could even put in a couple of leaves if we want. Maybe we'll do a leaf here. Or maybe two. Maybe we'll do one in here. Now this is all going to change, so don't stress and try to make perfect leaves, okay? This is going to be very loose. So now I think I will add in a little blue. I'm going to use Prussian blue. Okay, I'm just going to add that to the green just to get a little deeper bluey kind of green and we're going to do some thicker blades of grass. Like so. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mess this all up. So I'm going to go in with my size 8 brush and we're just going to start messing up that green that we put down. Okay, almost as if we just didn't like any of it. And what you want to do is you want to kind of drag it and blend it out. Okay, and as you're dragging that around you're going to Bring it up to the flower as close as you can. Even mess up this whole center section, like so. We're just activating it and letting it flow a bit. And then just keep dragging it out with your brush and just coming up close to that flower. Okay, just like that. We can even mess up everything that's going on in here. And 
and you don't have to specifically paint all around these flowers you can leave some white space okay you just want to kind of imply that maybe these are in a kind of a big field full of grass that's kind of the look we're getting we're going for not getting for and then as I get closer to the top I'm just going to fade it out even less so we're going to fade these guys out as well just reactivate them but you don't have to blur the whole thing you can leave like a leaf shape on the one side just kind of blur out the outer edge you're just playing around I say that a lot in my videos but really this this is about playing around and because our flowers are so light I don't want a real heavy background I just want this to kind of fade off So while that's still wet, we're going to go in with my number five and we're going to go back to our greens. Maybe I'll even make a yellowy green by adding in some of that yellow ochre. So you've got a nice yellowy green, almost like the olive green, and we're going to start putting in some more blades of grass and it's wet so it's going to blend out but we're going to be adding paint taking it out adding it back in just playing around until we get the kind of background look that we want so I've got a quite a thick mixture of just the sap green now and I'm going to go back in. I don't want too much water on my brush. And we're going to flick some more grasses in. And don't stress over this too much because you can lift it up if it's getting to be too heavy. Maybe we'll put another leaf in okay so because this is wet you just get this kind of nice implication of a leaf it's not too literal now maybe we'll try a little bit more of the blue so this is just trial and error I shouldn't say trial and error there's no real error we're just having fun put a nice deep bluey green color in here now that might be getting a little heavy so we're going to go in with our number eight and we're going to pick some of it up maybe re-wet this fade that out a bit just so it's a little heavier towards the bottom let's fade this guy out see what that does I like that there just has a little bit of that blue in it you can soften that up pick more of it up blend it out a bit so I've got a lot of water on my paper and this might be getting a little heavy so I'm just gonna fade this out like so and 
And maybe I'll go back in with my size four Princeton Neptune. These just hold a little bit more water than the other brush I'm using. And we're gonna get blooms now too, and that's kind of fun as well. Just put a leaf in here. And maybe another one up here somewhere. I'm gonna go back to the sap green. See, this is just gonna be a nice blurry leaf in the background. And this one might be getting just a little too literal, so we'll just pick some of that up. We can go in and add a little more, bit more green in here. And I'm gonna let that sit for a bit and we'll get back to it. But we're going to go back to our flowers now. And I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of this dusty rose kind of color. It's gonna be much deeper this time. Okay. And we're gonna add a little bit more depth to our flowers with this really dark mixture. Again, I'm just tapping it in the center. And this is just gonna give a little bit more dimension to our flowers. Now, when I flick this out, I'd like to go back to the number five, because it's a little stiffer than the Neptunes, and I wanna have a little more control about what happens with this deeper color. So I'm just flicking very lightly because I want that deep color to stay in the center, but I just kind of want to blend it in a bit, just like that. Okay, so quick flicks like that. See how that's just giving a little texture and depth to these petals. I might have let this sit too long. Maybe I should just do a couple of petals at a time. If you're doing this on a cotton paper, you have a little more play time, but it dries a little quicker on the cellulose papers. Okay, we'll do the same thing to this one. I think I'm just gonna do a couple of petals at a time on this one to give me a little more play time with it. We'll just do three at a time. So rinse and dry off your brush again and just really lightly with the tip of your brush, just flick this color up. And if you find it's getting too dark, just rinse off your brush and you can start to push it back down. Again, following the curve of the petal. This guy's just going up and to the left a bit. Just gonna tap a little bit more into the center there. Now for this one, we'll just kind of do some flicks from the bottom up. Maybe a little bit in here. I'm not gonna flick those areas, I'm just gonna bleed them out. So I'm just gonna go in with a damp brush and just kiss the edge of that, just so it bleeds up a bit. 
Then we'll flick these guys. Just drag this pigment up. If you have to turn your paper, because this kind of is a little bit of an awkward angle, so I am going to turn it just so I have more control over the direction of the little wisps we're, wisps we're doing. Wisps. Okay. Now for the centers, I think I'm going to use blue, the Prussian blue, and a little bit of black. Or maybe a lot of black. And I'm just going to put a center in there. Remember, leave a little bit of white space. Yeah, I like that. We're not really going to see the center on that one, so we're just going to leave that one as it is. Then we're going to go back to our background and start playing around again with that. So I'm going to go into the greens again. Maybe a little bit more blue this time. And we're going to flick some more blades of grass up or stems. Let's pull the stem down off this guy, like so. And we'll flick some blades up this way. And we'll even kind of curl them over just to give them a little bit of life and a little bit of an organic feel. And I don't want to carry this up too high, but we just want a few flicks of grasses up there. So let's do some more sap green and let's throw in some more of that Prussian blue. So we're just playing around with different values and different shades of the green. The brush is a little dry. I want this one really blue. I'm gonna to go to indigo, I think. There we go. Get some indigo in here. For some nice, rich blues. Just a few hits of that really deep bluish green. Like so. Then I'm gonna go in with a clean brush and just Kind of kiss those edges too. I'm going to take my bigger brush and just pick some of it up down here just to lighten it up. So this is just going to pick up some of the paint but still leave that kind of impression that there's a bunch of blades of grass in the background. And I think this is pretty much where I want it to be. Maybe just pick up a little bit more. Do another maybe light impression of some leaves up there. More of the olive green, I think. Don't want it too dark. And I'm just going to go whoop, leaf and a leaf. I 
okay but I am going to wait for that to dry and just blur those out a bit as well but I'm gonna go back into the kind of blue color and we're gonna put a, just a couple of really dark strands of grass in here maybe this stem even can be kind of brought back into the picture like so I could play with this all day but we might start ruining it so I think I'm going to leave it at that aside from the fact that I just want to blur that leaf out a bit just so it's just an impression of a leaf like so you can even just put water on one little part of the leaf if you're part of some of the grass just to have one edge bleed out so we're getting a funky kind of bloom there I'm gonna leave that I kind of like it just makes it more organic and I think that's it so there you go there is a fun simple way to add an interesting background to your watercolor florals without literally painting an entire background so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful and I want to thank you as always for joining me and supporting my channel that's it for today take care and I will see you next time